And when it comes to motion graphics, no other 3D tool does it better than Cinema 4D. And today we're seeing some brand new improvement and cool features coming to Cinema 4D 2023. With amazing and impressive groundbreaking features for users, Maxon has continually pushed the boundaries of what Cinema 4D can offer. Now we do know that sometime last year that the folks at Maxon did purchase Pixelogic ZBrush and with this brand new release they've now integrated ZBrush and Cinema 4D to make it much more easier for users to transfer data across these apps. Now before we get into the brand new features that is now available for Cinema 4D 2023, it is worth noting that there are a couple of announcements. The very first one is Maxon has ended perpetual licenses for new version users. So updates are only going to be available to users via subscription to either Cinema 4D or Maxon One product bundle. Secondly, the two-digit numbering system has now been changed to four-digit numbering, which now simply means that instead of having this new version, which is called 2023, to be called Cinema 4D R7, where the R simply denotes the release for upgrade for those who have perpetual license, or called Cinema 4D S27, where the S actually denotes subscription, Cinema 4D would now be called with the four-digit numbering Cinema 4D 2023. Now, I believe this is a very good way to go with this, as more and more DCC apps are adopting a future year of release, contrary to having a numbering system that might either be confusing to new users or might not just fit into the year numbering. Now with that said, let's talk about some of the brand new features that are now available in Cinema 4D 2023. The very first one is the new global symmetry system. This provides an easy access to all symmetry options during modeling, which can be turned on or off. And just like you can work with symmetry when you're working with the previously existing sculpting tools in Cinema 4D, the new global symmetry system makes it super possible for you to mirror polygonal operations across different coordinates. And at the same time, if you're thinking about exploring with this when creating or working with splines, this is super possible. It is also worth mentioning that the symmetry tool also works asymmetrically and in case you're working on a posed model which has a couple of topologies that are posed asymmetrically, you can take advantage of this brand new tool and edit the mesh or topology symmetrically. Unified simulations for models and now here. This was first seen in April with clothes and rope simulation where you can combine all simulation objects into a single scene that calculates quickly either in GPU or CPU. Now in addition to clothes and ropes, soft bodies can be simulated using pole constraints which can be generated within or outside the volume of the objects to add structure. These parameters can be adjusted accordingly to create a realistic soft body simulation and fields that can be used to define the direction of the pose. Furthermore, soft bodies can interact with other objects in the scene controlled by the framework and as well, simulations can now be combined with keyframe animations and this workflow is what Maxon calls mixed animation. Now other features that you'll be getting with the simulation include the control for target length of cloth for those making cloth. There's also a soft body constraint. There's a stickiness option for simulated objects. The vertex map is also available. The vertex colors can also be defined procedurally with the help of fields to achieve some very interesting results. With the release of Cinema 4D 2023, Maxon is taking color management to a whole new level. Joining other DCC apps, Cinema 4D now supports the color management standard OpenColor.io. This integration in Cinema 4D gives a unified color management pipeline with Cinema 4D settings preserved when rendering with Redshift or Magic Bullet looks. With this new update, users can always choose between the open color I.O. or the basic color management within the color chooser. Users can pick colors and display spaces, which tries to preserve the final brand color based on your tone mapping. ZBrush now has a seamless link with Cinema 4D. The GoZ bridge now creates a redshift material linking your vertex paint and textures. You can also define displacement within settings and render right away. The subdivision surfaces on meshes can also be transferred from ZBrush and at the same time polygroups integration has also been improved. So if you're working with ZBrush and Cinema 4D, this just simply makes it worth it. And while we speak about ZBrush and Cinema 4D integration, the folks at Maxon have finally migrated ZBrush users from Pixelogic all the way to Maxon. So it is worth mentioning that if you do own an account with the previous owners of ZBrush, which are the Pixelogic guys, you may need to check out your emails to get updated information about this, log on to your Maxon account and get things running. Redshift is also having some improvement with this brand new release. With the rounded corner feature which was previously available for GPU users now available for CPU, users can now rely on their CPU to get a much more nicer looking render for their models. There's also a better energy conservation for materials using the newly improved standard material for Redshift 3.5 
Subsurface scattering has also been massively improved to enhance a more realistic render using the random warp which provides better details and colors. And in line with other developments, it's also worth mentioning that the volume technology for black body shader which allows for recreation of realistic looking fires and smoke VDBs has now been improved even more. So at this point you can get a much more realistic rendering from volumes and volumes can now interact with incoming light directions. Another good feature which shouldn't be overlooked is the material stacking. At this point, users can now assign labels or decals to the same object by simply using Cinema 4D's texture mode and readjusting the labels or decals on the fly. And with these features, Redshift users can now create even more better and appealing looking renders. With the Asset Browser, you can now add your own material and asset folder to be displayed in any folder or file system within Cinema 4D. This looks pretty similar to what you have with Blender's Asset Library, but in this case it is still locked down for Cinema 4D's entire user space. Another beautiful improvement is models that you've made or sculpt that are done in Forger can now be moved directly to Cinema 4D and at this point once you make models with Cinema 4D, you can also transfer them directly to Forger. With Forger having capabilities of polygonal modeling which makes hard surface modeling a possibility in Forger, this just simply refines and brings the entire Maxon system full circle. So if you're thinking about using Forger for hard surface or maybe you want to use it for sculpting, transferring these files back and forth to Cinema 4D and making your high resolution scope directly in ZBrush, bringing it all the way back to Cinema 4D and doing some very nice rendering is now super possible. So this is more like it. For anyone who would like to take a look at some of the improvements that are now available in Cinema 4D, then links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.